And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. It is a brand new week of shows, the last full week of May. That is hard to believe every time I say that. I cannot believe where half the year is almost gone, or at least half the year will be up as soon as June uh, gets here and expires. Uh, of course, we're presented by our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. If you like to drink as we do here and drink responsible we do here on the Backstage Pass, uh, check them out. Bangtail.com, easyliquor.com. You can order online. Also in Nashville, Total Wine and Specs. Uh, out there at Live Oak tonight, which I believe Whitney Miller is out there tonight at Live Oak. Check her out and drink it with a glass of Bangtail whiskey. Also, our friends in Honky Tonk, Texas, great turnout it was last week on Friday. Uh, Randall King sold out the place or was close to it, and you couldn't breathe in there. It was so hot. It was good to see Randall and the guys out there, too, as well. Uh, thanks to Derek and all they do here for the show. And our friends, Ricky Ford at Gentle Ben Spirits at GentleBen.com. Uh, the vodka, the gin, the bourbon. I've been talking about it now for almost four months. Uh, fantastic out there. Make sure you stop by the tasting room in Alvin, Texas, and, of course, check them out at GentleBen.com. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to get down here on the Backstage Pass powered by the uh, SportsGuysPodcast.com uh, and, of course, uh, 2023 uh, Josie Award nominated for Media Company of the Year. I'm going to get down with this guy on the new album called How We Get Down, and it came out on April the 20th, I believe it was. Uh, it is Derek Randall here on the Backstage Pass. Derek, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Man, it's been a while. Like I said, just checking in with you, too, and so glad uh, you guys reached out to us. we got a lot to talk about today, including this debut album for you guys, which did come out April 20th. I always love to check my facts before I go live, which is a good thing, too. Uh, tell me about the response so far. So a little bit over a month now that this has been out for you guys. And, man, this is all guitars. You guys aren't letting up. I mean, Light the Night Up, Coming Back for You, uh, Fade Away, the title track itself. Uh, how we get down terrific album man and like i said i review a lot of albums here on the show uh let's let's kind of hit on some highlights and uh so far the feedback you guys are getting so far man uh we're it, it, it's been a it's been a, a great response uh we just found out yesterday that we got over five hundred thousand streams in that month so for us for just being a little small fry in a big pond man it's mm -hmm. uh that, that means the world to us that that many people are out there, you know, hitting that play button and adding them to their, their playlists and whatnot. And um, it's, it's just been uh, everybody top to bottom has said, said great things about it. So we're just, we're just so excited that, that uh, it's getting the response that it is. When you look at all the songs on there too, for you, uh, was there maybe one or two that kind of stood out? You're like, man, I want to step in the studio and, you know, put my vocals to this because this song really kind of stood out to me were there two or three songs for you that kind of did it to to go record this record well so uh i write ones. all this yeah yeah so i write all the songs mm -hmm. and then also uh my guitar player jesse writes a couple of songs and um so there there was one that jesse wrote uh that was called blackberry crow and we were sitting down in mm -hmm. nashville on a back porch and i heard him playing that and i was like well who's that like who, whose song is that you know like man i wrote that's that's pretty cool he's like oh i just wrote this you know a couple days ago i was like oh we're recording that like you just hear it's just one of those where you, you hear it immediately and you're just like mm -hmm. first i'm like we're, we're definitely doing that and um that's probably not our most popular song but i just i just really it's blackberry crow it's just about you know uh holding on to the ones that you love while they're here man and um it just mm -hmm. has a really really cool message and i, I just i love that one and uh the audio engineer man he did me a solid and made me sound better than i probably really actually <laughs> sound on that one so i appreciate it but i, I really like blackberry cross a good one now when you look at the top of it too with uh setting the tone you always want to set the tone especially with a full length album with a song just kind of grabs people you know by the neck and pulls them in and i think you did that with uh light the night up too because it was just one of those things where we just want to get out there have a good time to me, I got from at least what I took from it was, okay, life is short. You never guarantee tomorrow. Uh, go do it. Go have fun. Like the night up. I mean, that's what the song was about great lyrically, and, and that really had to set the tone for the album for you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, usually, my like, I try to write songs pretty metaphorically or something where you can put a story. But that one, yeah, it's pretty you – know, it, there's no, no denying what that one's about. And I have this group of friends here back home where – everybody's got that you know those friends that that call you up on a friday when you didn't have plans and they're just like hey you want to get together yeah you know i'll meet up for a beer and then it turns into like just a two-day <laughs> event you know that's pretty much what it's about and and like like you said those those nights are the ones that turn into legend and and i just i love that and i love those those guys so 
the the ones you can't remember are usually the best ones that <laughs> he went out with a bang on, no doubt. Uh, yeah. And then kind of going through a few more tracks uh, coming back for you. You've got a radio edit version on there too, and of course the mm. uh, the version there with the full band. Some killer things you guys are doing, and not just with that song, but I mean, light the night up and uh, coming back for you, fade away. Y'all are doing some really cool guitar riffs in these things. Talk about just the guitar arrangements for this because that song really uh, coming back for you really lights the guitars up. Yeah, so um, my my lead guitar player, his name is Joan, Jonesy, Sean Jones, and he was in a rock band with me. And uh, he's like um, he's like driving a Ferrari in a parade, man. It, it looks good, <laughs> but not really using it to the full capability, man. He's just he's just so phenomenal. And and when we when we do show our rock roots on that side, man, he we just we, we just let him go and let let him rip. And then my drummer's a metal. He he has a metal background, so. We did some of those triplets and stuff in the chorus and you know and i i, I try to when we're writing songs like if you if, if you heard how i wrote that originally and then brought it to them it would be it was a little bit different and then they uh they polish it out and put everybody puts their little you know uh little uh, little stamp on it and then mm -hmm. it becomes what it becomes but yeah coming back for you has, has had a really really uh great response a lot of people um have gravitated towards that one it's been on the radio and like like 15 or 16 places and we're, we're we're super super stoked and just tickled that uh that people would want to hear that and uh it, it's definitely one that you can you can roll down the windows to and just scream if you got to <laughs> yeah i drive a pickup just like you probably do too and i mean like i said roll down the windows and even on the hot days man let the wind blow and just have a good time with something like that too just jamming yeah. in in the background too hey i want to get a little bit of your background just talk about your love for music and growing up and and, and kind of those musical influences and kind of when i guess the the bug kind of hit you as far as knowing that you know that you're going to take this thing by the horns and and, and do this for the rest of your life give us a little bit of, of, of the Derek randall story, uh, story background story yeah, I'll try it, man. I'm pretty long winded when it comes to this story, <laughs> but I'll, I'll try to I'll try to, <laughs> to tighten it up a little bit. Uh, man, I've always there. I've, music's always been my thing. There's a picture that uh, my dad has of me when uh, when I was like three years old, just all I'm wearing my like, little tidy whities just rocking <laughs> in a little Sammy Hagar guitar running around mm -hmm. the house. But um, I've, I've always just loved music, even when I was like. I get grounded all the time to my room, but I would be able to still play the radio. So I'd, mm -hmm. I'd sit up listening to like 90s, 90s country, mm -hmm. you know, George. And uh, I really, really love like my top album of all time is Garth's Double Live, man. Yeah. I probably wore that CD out so many times my dad had to keep buying new ones. Um, <laughs> but then at the same time, too, I really liked um, just the driving rock of like uh, my, my father was big into like the Scorpions. So oh, yeah. So like the you know no one like you and rock you like a hurricane. Mm -hmm. So I, I had those two influences and in, in growing up down in Missouri and uh, it's it's kind of where 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 everything kind of melts together and 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 rock and whatnot. And I never actually got into uh, music until later in life. I had a few buddies that were uh, they were like, hey man, um, we don't really have nothing going on. We're just a bunch of dumb kids and you want to come over <laughs> and jam? I was like, sure. Mm -hmm. so we, we just started jamming and then another buddy came by one day he's like oh that's kind of cool you guys should play a show i was like oh okay sure he so he 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 uh set this up and there's a little there's a picture of it um where we actually did a, a show at his house and he called it barn fest you know he's trying to make it <laughs> make it nice it was just like our high school mm -hmm. buddies and stuff tiki torches out and i'm such a hillbilly man there's a picture uh i'm wearing blue swim trunks and a red flannel as the, it was what I was wearing that first show we ever played. And uh, then when people were there, they were like, Hey man, um, how can we, how can we listen to the record? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we don't, we don't have a record. What do you mean? <laughs> like, we just, like, we just do this just to kill time. Yeah. So it just, it spiraled. And then the next thing, the next thing. And then once you have that, you do more shows. And um, the first time I really realized, Oh, maybe, maybe we could do something with this is, down in St. Louis, I was in a band called Defiance Point, and we uh, mm -hmm. we started selling out these small venues all the way up to where we did a CD release party, and it was like a fifteen hundred seater. And you just are like, man, I guess a few a few people did what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's just yeah, and then it just it spiraled from there. And then I took a break for a little while because when that band broke up, you know, you get jaded a little bit. You're just mm -hmm. like, man, you get so close and you taste it and. Uh, you know, you love it so much. So I walked away. But then when I started writing songs again, um, 
buddy of mine, his name's Joe Bazzelli. I went to, to school with him down in Missouri. He's in Nashville. He's a great songwriter, great songwriter. He's down there all the time. And uh, I sent him a few of the songs and he was like, hey, you should come down to uh, Nashville. And uh, the next thing you know, uh, I'm down in Nashville playing it for other people. And then I'm recording songs and then off we go again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the next thing you know, we're releasing an album, got 500,000 streams and I'm on a sweet podcast. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, man, like I said, I appreciate it. Hey, you never know where it's going to come from, man. It comes from all angles, too. And like, I appreciate you guys always, you know, reaching out to us, man, to cover the music. Because like I said, when the music's good, the ear likes what it likes, man. It's going to go, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna relate to that, too, as well. Uh, you mentioned 90s country, too. And so much of that is starting to make a little bit of a comeback today. And I love yeah. the fact that, you know, we're seeing these guys still the legends. I mean, Clay Walker and Tracy Lawrence and even George out there doing mm -hmm. his thing. Garth, I mean. They're yeah. all keeping busy, and I think there's a little bit of, a, I guess, a thirst or a hunger to get uh, back now, you know, this 90s flavor. And I know that's got to be, at least in your mind, it's got to be a great thing for the industry, right? Oh, yeah. I think it's I think it's absolutely great. And uh, and you get you get some people that only want that or only want a certain kind. But I think there's room for everything. Pop country, regular country. I don't know what, you, what even regular country is anymore, but you can do <laughs> classic country and I mean, you got the the Zach Bryan's kind of bringing mm -hmm. up that, that kind of almost like that Texas country. Yeah. And then you Texas, Oklahoma. I don't know if I should say that since you're from Texas. Red dirt, same thing. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that red dirt <laughs> style. And then you have, you know, guys like me and Hardy that uh, mm -hmm. you know, more on the rock side of the fence. But then you also have uh, more of that, like even Morgan is starting to yep. go into like he did a song with Diplo and it sounds amazing. You mm -hmm. got EDM. I don't know if you've heard yep. that yet. Like the EDM, where you got the EDM country. I think I think there's room for all of it, and I think it's really cool. And um, I I really do like that a lot of that '90s country is coming. I like John Party is amazing. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. Laney Laney Wilson is another good example on the mm -hmm. female side of things, where she's just just raw, just raw country. Good talent. So yeah. it's like, uh, yeah, I think it, there's room for everything, but it's really nice to see mm -hmm. all of them thriving at the same time. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned that name, too, and just congratulations to her last week on the major awards, too, the ACM Awards show. She took yeah. home some major hardware, too, and I had talked to her back in December of 2020 before she blew up, and I knew at the time, made a bold statement on the show. I said, you are the future of this industry, and it gets people <laughs> like that because you have a variety of music here, and you catch people at the right time, and you just know when they're going to have that success down the road because of their work ethic and their grind, and also knowing just they're going to get in the studio, do their thing, put out great music. People are going to flock to it, and you know, it's kind of off to the races. That's what I love about it, too. And it's it's a song like that that makes me think about this because you guys have put this out as a single before you included it on the latest album, How We Get Down, uh, Favorite Monster. I wanted to go there because, like, this is another one that is, man, it's like a roller coaster ride. Holy crap. I mean, it's out there. It's, it's just a cool vibe. And uh, give us a little backstory of how this came about, Favorite Monster. Uh, that's a, that's more of a ballad one for us. And uh, that one is... Uh... That, that means a lot to me, man. I, mm -hmm. I, I wrote that one in about 15, 20 minutes. And, and sometimes it just happens like I wish they all happened like that. That would make it real easy for me. <laughs> but, I, you know, it just it happens so quick. And um, mm -hmm. it's so being a musician or, or doing anything in life, uh, it's it, there's a lot of things that people tell you. And, and you might even have had to deal with it. Like when you start first started doing this, mm -hmm. people tell you, yeah, you know, you're probably not that one in a million. You should probably just, you know, focus on something regular, you know, just always, be, it always happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that could be anything. It, it could be mm -hmm. someone who's struggling with who they are is not, is not being accepted by society or whatever it is. And, um, and I, you know, I, we struggle with that as, as artists, like, cause you know, in, until you are at the, at the pinnacle, you know, you always have that self doubt, like, am I good enough for this? Like you have mm -hmm. imposter syndrome, but at some point you have to just, and I'm sure you, you did this as well, where you're just, you sit back and you're like, you know what? I don't care because this is what I love and this is what makes me feel alive. This is what I want to do. So you just let go and you say, you know what, that, that it, it may be a little bit of a monster, but it's mine. And, and yeah. even if the world burns down, I'm going to do it till it till it does. You know, and <laughs> that's that's what Favorite Monster is about. That's it's a, it's about staying true to yourself and and, and uh, just finding happiness in, in whatever it is that you that, that you, who you are. No, it's great stuff. And like I said, from one of the best ballots out there, too, I got a chance to listen to. Uh, it did it for me because we always think of that. That's the mindset of people. And you're right about that is I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do this till I'll probably die because this is what I love to do. You know, burn it down. And, and take this to my grave because this is something I started, you know, 15, 16 years ago back in radio and 
keeping it going. And in any industry, there's going to be challenges that you face, and you're always going to have that self doubt. You talk about too as well. That's just something you either keep pushing forward, or you just uh, fold up the tent and say, "I'm not going to camp out anymore." <laughs> That's the way it goes, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. And it, do, it yeah, it doesn't go away. I mean, even no. we've we've had shows where even with this, where we've sold out, or I already know that there's the club is almost almost sold out before we even get there. Mm-hmm. And I'm still like in the back of my mind, I'm like, what if they don't come? What if they don't show up? You know, like you're just always. Yeah. And, and then they're, they're there and it just like, you get this like relief and you just, you know, fire it up. But uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I love it. We got a few more songs to hit on here too, including one called fade away. I want to talk about, and also a cool <laughs> one called Blackwater revival. That's out there across all the digital platforms. The whole album is out there. In fact, how we get down came out April uh, 20th of this year, uh, a little over a month ago from Derek Randall here on the uh, backstage pass powered by the sports guys podcast.com. We're live on that very website right now. Also, if you ever miss any shows, they're free out there too. go archive on that very website, go subscribe to us on the YouTube channel. And of course all out there across all the social media coming back here more with uh, Derek Randall here on the backstage pass. Uh, a lot more coming up to talk about the record. And also a big uh, second annual golf tournament happening, a big fundraiser uh, happening in Claire, Michigan, coming up here on July 22nd. We're going to talk about that here on the Backstage Pass. A word from our sponsors. Stay tuned for more coming up here on the Backstage Pass. Hang tight. Branham here with Ricky Ford, owner of Gentle Ben Spirits, AM class of 85. And Ricky, I love it all when it comes to Gentle Ben, the vodka, the gin, love the bourbon as well. Can't wait to try the cast strength bourbon. But when you're making your bourbon, you've set the bar very high when it comes to your product. When you try it, you will realize exactly why it is that we were the recipient of the double platinum award this year at the Ascots. Sit back with your company and raise a glass to the very best, Gentle Ben. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host, Kirsty Krause, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here with Derek Randall on the backstage pass tomorrow. Of course, another great artist coming on the show, Chancey Williams. He just made his Grand Ole Opry debut here a few weeks ago there at the Grand Ole Opry. And, of course, we're going to have May Estes on the show on Wednesday to round out the week. Then a holiday weekend, about four or five days off. And we'll be back uh, the following week there. Uh, hard, hard to believe it's almost June 1st here. I can't even where the year's uh, going right now, too, here on the backstage pass. But definitely, and again, nominated out there for the 2023 Josie Music Awards Media Company of the Year. Make sure in attendance with us. We'll be there in October. We're looking forward to a great event out there. The fine folks at the Josie Music Awards always do a job. The ninth annual awards show coming up October 22nd out there, 2023. Back here with Derek Randall on the backstage pass. How we get down here is the latest album came out April uh, 20th too. Hey, let's let's run through a, a couple of more tracks on here because um, I love this one, Fade Away. Give me the story on that one. <laughs> so that one actually is a, a song I wrote a long, long time ago in that rock band that I was talking about just a little bit. And mm-hmm. uh, we, uh, that it's just one that it just, I just love it. It's, it's, and again, it's about uh, sometimes you, uh, you go a little too hard and that's just the world fades away. Uh, I always say like when I start drinking a little too much, it's like mm-hmm. there's a fast forward button or something. And then all of a sudden it's like, instead of being like, 
you know, 10 o'clock at night, it's three in the morning, like, like that. So mm -hmm. it's just, that, that's what it's about. It's just about fading away into the night with, uh, with, with some of the boys <laughs> and I'm sure, you know, I'm sure other people have, have done that too, but yeah, that's, uh, it's, it, it's really cool. And we, we added a, the drop in the, in the bridge, which is really mm -hmm. fun. That's been a lot of fun playing that out, out on tour. Cause everybody's like banging their heads and because we, um, because we're we're a little rock, little country, we call it. It's like y'all alternative, or uh, <laughs> some people say like farm core instead of hardcore. Yeah. Farm core. And uh, yeah, no, I I keep telling the guys like, man, one day mm -hmm. we might get you know at rock shows you see like circle pits. I was mm -hmm. like, well, yep. we could do we could have crop circles. We call them crop circles, <laughs> and if we could just do that one time, man, that would be so epic. So I was like, maybe maybe it'll happen at that with that one, but not yet. It hasn't. I happened love that. Yet. Great analogy too, no doubt. Uh, love that too. Those shows, man. It's like I see, it's, it's it's you're having a good time, or you're not. But I can always say that it fade away reminded me so much of a fast forward button on a song. That's why I can relate to it so much. Uh, another one, Blackwater Revival. What's the story on that one? So we were in the studio uh, with a guy named Rob Rusha, uh, and we're finishing out the album this past December down in Chicago. He's uh, he works with uh, a band Nonpoint. He's done a lot of their most recent stuff and. Uh, he's a really great guy and we're sitting in the studio and I just I had an idea and um, we we actually wrote that in studio so that yeah and it's uh, it's it's about uh, just dealing with uh, with stuff again like uh, at the end of the day um, you can't change your past you gotta live with it and you just gotta own it and and roll with it <laughs> good bad and different that's just what it is and you just just move on with it just once you accept it and move on with it things get a little bit easier no doubt man hey i want to talk to you guys about a cool event coming up here too it's awesome awesome golf fundraiser your second annual golf fundraiser rock for vets the number four rock the number four vets uh dot live is some information out there july 22nd uh, it's going to take place there uh in claire michigan uh registration is at eight and the shotgun start at nine o'clock too as well there are some uh, pretty cool whole sponsorships available, including a lunch and dinner, uh, 18 holes with a cart, 50-50 drawings, raffle drawings, prizes for the longest butt, longest drive, and the closest to the pin, and a lot more. Uh, there's a QR code on your page, and people can check out rock the number 4 vetslive Tell us all about this and how you got involved with another cool thing for the second annual golf fundraiser. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that's put on by a fellow named Chris Martin up here in uh, mm -hmm. Michigan. And uh, last year, uh, I... I touch base with him about playing rock for vets the the music festival mm -hmm. and it's it's more on the rock side of things but but we fit all right in, into that and he was he heard some of our music and was gracious enough to invite us up there so we're going back to that this year and um there we're also doing something special on the friday night i don't know if he's announced it yet but we're, we're doing something with that too but anything with that that involves our veterans and, and supporting our troops and and the, the you know we're, we're always down 100% mm -hmm. of the time, like I tell my team, well, I'm in. Like, you don't even have sure. to ask me. Just me. If, it's, if it works out in the schedule, we're doing it. Uh, and I do love golf, too. So when he told me that they were going to do the the golf event, I was like, man, scrambles where it's at because I suck. Uh, <laughs> at golf. So <laughs> the best ball is the way to go. Um, but uh, yeah, that, no, it's it's for a great cause. All that money. He doesn't know. There's no proceeds that go to anything but the veterans. So the veterans. It, it definitely, if you like golf, if you're in Michigan and you like supporting, supporting the vets and want to have a good time, get some good food and definitely get out there. And I, up. I may have to come up there and play it myself too. Cause that's just an awesome time of year to even go to Michigan too. That's a beautiful time summer. I mean, these prices are awesome too. 70 bucks for one player. I mean, yeah. 280 for a foursome and there's a QR code on Derek's Facebook page. And I'm sure probably on most of the socials out there too. And yeah. you can snap that, get involved and it's a uh, firefly golf links. Uh, which is out there too as well. And again, all the money uh, proceeds go to um, the vets out there. Again, uh, register through that QR code. And of course, uh, check out uh, for more information, rock the number four vets um, dot live uh, for the second annual golf uh, fundraiser too. Uh, back to your album too. I love this one because another one that really, um, you know, did it for me. And I use that term a lot because again, I review so much music on a weekly basis out there too. Praying that it's me. Give us a little story on that one. Ooh, so there's two songs on there uh, that are the exact opposite of. Mm -hmm. uh, gosh, I have like this emo hair going on. Today. <laughs> I can't. I'm not gonna tuck it up there. There we go. Um, the that uh, in relationships sometimes 
that one's particular about everybody's been in that relationship where you're like, you're not really sure where that other person's at, but you're like, you're hoping at the end of the day that it works out kind of deal. And um, that's, that's what praying that it's me is about. This is just, you're, you're going through it and you're like, I don't know what's going on, man. It's like hot and cold highs and lows. And you, you're not sure where you're going to land, but you know, you hope at the end of the day, it lands on you. And that's what, what praying that it's me is about. Uh, again, it's a fantastic album too. There's something for everybody on there too. Definitely. You got some good ballads. You got some upbeat killer shit with guitars going on too. And it's just, uh, Lights out, man. Uh, one of the best rock albums I've heard, too. Rock country, whatever you want to call it now. Southern rock. He's got a little bit of a Brantley Gilbert going on with some, uh, with a little bit of Jacob Bryant. with all kind of stuff, man. It's got a lot of cool stuff out there. So make sure you guys uh, go stream it across all those digital platforms. Uh, final time out here. Time out to pay those bills here on the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuys.com. Uh, Coming up here in a few weeks, another great uh, two or three sports shows. We'll do it. Of course, we'll have all the information for NFL kickoff as soon as training camps get underway in August too. And some more cool guests tomorrow, Chancey Williams uh, just made his grand Ole Opry debut and Wednesday, another female fantastic artist, May Estes, who have a lot of respect for her music out there too as well. I believe she just put out another uh, debut EP or album. I can't remember right offhand, but go check her out. May Estes uh, out there across all the digital platforms. More with Derek Randall here on the show. Word from our friends at Gentle Ben Spirits. Guys, if you like drinking, it is the vodka, the gin, the bourbons award-winning. Uh, do it with Gentle Ben. Go to GentleBen.com, the tasting room in Alvin, Texas, or if you're at the Astros game, just go by the Gentle Ben bar outside the Crawford boxes. Get your drink on out there, too. It's Gentle Ben. It's baseball. You can't go wrong. Also, our friends at HonkyTonkTexas.us. Get your tickets for upcoming shows there here in uh, Silsby, Texas, and of course, our friends at Bangtail whiskey go out to live oak tonight catch whitney miller and get a glass of bang tail whiskey while you're at it more with derek randall here on the show here it's the backstage pass powered by the sports guys podcast.com stay tuned the bang tail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base the front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp it has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host, Kirsty Krause, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... Jeremy Branham here with Ricky Ford, owner of Gentle Ben Spirits, a and class of 85. And Ricky, I love it all when it comes to Gentle Ben, the vodka, the gin, love the bourbon as well. Can't wait to try the cast strength bourbon. But when you're making your bourbon, you set the bar very high when it comes to your product. When you try it, you will realize exactly why it is that we were the recipient of the double platinum award this year at the Ascots. Sit back with your company and raise a glass to the very best Gentle Ben. Derek Randall on the backstage pass. So how we get down the latest album, the debut album came out April 20th. So make sure you go download that, get those streams already over half a million in a month. So get them up to a million by the end of next month to see where things <laughs> go out there too. Congratulations on that feat. And this is a damn good uh, album. Like I said, I review a lot of music during the week. You guys know I do that here on this show again, uh, powered by the sports guys, so podcast.com and man, it is uh fantastic kind of that summer album good summer feel if you want to go to the beach and just uh you know play some music on your speaker and let it just blare for people driving up and down the beach that's what i was doing <laughs> just a couple weeks ago i had a speaker out there and just playing it uh when it came out as we'd gone down to uh, galveston down there and enjoyed uh, 
some time with the family. Like, who's that? I'm like, just look up Derek Randall, man, or listen to my show. He's coming on here in a few weeks, no doubt about it. Hey, I want to talk some uh, sports to you and kind of get rapid fire going because uh, this has not been their year. And you were telling me a little bit before the show, we were kind of messaging each other back and forth. Your favorite team is the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to go there and say that it used to be, and it still is in some capacity, the rivalry for my hometown Houston Astros here because – Back in the day, it was the National League Central into the 90s. Yeah. And, of course, all the, the great rivalries that they had, postseasons, holes, And, of course, uh, mm-hmm. I still think that ball is, is in orbit right now, too. When, uh, <laughs> that one he hit on Brad Lidge. Yeah, yeah. he's Brad Lidge. Yeah, no doubt. So, uh, give me the – because, again, a great franchise, 11 world titles. You know, hadn't been there since, what, 2011-ish, 12-ish, 13, somewhere in there that the last championship they won, somewhere in 13, maybe somewhere in there. But yeah. I will say this, the young talent um, – Again, I know change of you know leadership is the word I'm looking for in the dugout. Mm-hmm. Uh, give me the take on the early part of the season. Long way to go, but I know got to get some players healthy too. Yeah, that it's. Uh, I feel like we've always like some of the years that we went when like 2000s. You were all we always had like man, we were spoiled man with Pujols and Edmonds and Roland and just you had that middle of the lineup and your pitching was solid and then it. In 2011, it was like, okay, we that was the last championship. We went in 13, but got beat by the Sox. True. Um, yeah. And it was, uh, it's, 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 then it kind of flipped and it's been, been our lineup that's been pretty good. And our, I feel like our pitching, like we just can't get healthy. We got some guys that are coming back. And uh, it's, if our pitching, it, at the, the beginning of the year, we would score seven runs. You know, our, our batting average is like 275 or something. Mm-hmm. But, we'd give up nine every game because our pitching was just so atrocious, but it, it kind of seems like they're, they're turning around. I think last time I checked, they were like eight and two in their last 10. So we're like, all right, yeah. but we, we were so far behind. So hopefully the boys can, can keep it up. But yeah, I remember um, those Astros when, when we were in the same division and listening to, as a kid, listening mm-hmm. to Jack Buck on the, on the radio yeah. in the summertime, you'd, we would just be sitting outside and, in Missouri, that was that's a thing, man. I, yeah, I don't know if you guys do that down in Texas, but absolutely we do. And you listen to a game. Sometimes you'd be watching it on TV, and you turn the audio off. You don't even want to hear it. You just you would turn Jack Buck on because his voice is just kind of like Vince Scully, man. Mm-hmm. It's just like you could just butter, yeah, yeah smooth, man. And <laughs> yeah, that, that's growing up St. Louis Cardinal baseball. Um, I think it's the greatest baseball town in the world. Obviously, I, it, um, it is. I, I agree with you too. Yeah, it's, it's the only the only other one is the arch rival, and I went to a game there because I got oh. to just see it, and I'm gonna go there. But just a place to watch a game, and, and for Houston, it was a rivalry because I go back to '98 when Kerry Wood struck out 20 Astros and became like the young Nolan Ryan of the day. Until he wore his arm out too, but Kerry had a a great career. Uh, is Wrigley Field? And I, I just say that too because I want to go to. I got to go see Old Bush. Back in the day when I was, again, radio days and travel and things like that, but have not been to New Bush yet. I want to go to a game there. Maybe we can get together and do that because I oh. think we just have a lot of fun out there drinking. You say the word, man. I'll go, I'll go to a game. I'll go to a Cardinal game anytime. I just, I, I, it just, it's a place. You're right about the atmosphere and about just how much people love their baseball town and about going there and packed every night. I don't give a damn who's pitching. It could be a triple A yeah. pitcher on the mound. It's just people love to go there and it's 47 to 50,000 per night, love their Cardinals, wear their red and white. And I'm a Lamar Cardinal down here, too. So the red and white and black, I know very well down here in Beaumont, Texas, where I'm at, too. So I'm a Cardinal for life. And speaking of Cardinals, I'm an Arizona Cardinal diehard fan for the NFL. So, okay, again, watching St. Louis doesn't hurt my feelings at all, too. And I'd love to go see him play. And I think we can we can hopefully make a, an arrangement. We'll talk about that off air. But it's just yeah. a passionate town with passionate baseball fans. And even Old Bush used to have – that feeling of just selling it out close to 50,000 every night, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, old, old Bush was a little bit smaller, but it, yeah, absolutely. It, and that's kind of like, uh, well, interesting fact. I actually went to the last game at Old Bush and the first oh. game at New Bush with my dad. It was like something that I can, I get to carry that forever, man. Me and my dad are like share our joy for, for baseball, but um, yeah, just being able to do that. So I've been, I got to see both of those. And I, I still remember like, driving home after that first game mark Mulder was the pitcher and yep. he he hit a double and a home run as a pitcher in on opening day in 2006 when it opened and i remember i still remember the f like in the interview and he was like <laughs> yeah i felt like i hit the the double felt better than the home run like it's weird how you remember those weird de- details but yeah it's uh 
Um, New Bush Stadium is, is definitely a really cool vibe. They put the ballpark village out there. They opened it up so you could see the arch and uh, it, it is a it is a great baseball town, man. We we have you know the three million plus uh, in attendance every single mm-hmm. year. We're in the top five for attendance, and part of me feels like that's why our uh, GM and some of our management is a little stingy with the with mm-hmm. paying because they're like, hey, we don't really have to spend money. These guys are going to show up either way. Um, cause you know, some of us, you know, you look at our rotation and you're like, Hey, why don't you spend a little money? Like there's no <laughs> salary cap and you know, we're all going to show up. Why don't you spend yeah. a little money on a big time pitcher or something? Mm-hmm. But they're, they're pretty conservative, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm down to say the word. I'll, and I'll, 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 dude, I'm not afraid. Like I said, don't threaten me with a good time yourself too. I'll go up there and, and uh, enjoy a, a weekend, take the wife and the kid and just have fun. Cause I think that that's a, a ballpark that I've not been to. Like I said, I passed by the old one being in St. Louis on some radio business a while back when I was doing AM FM on the dial. But now that I started my own thing too, it's like, I go where I want to go do do what I can do and bring the family and things like that. So I would definitely love to, uh, to get out there. Let me ask you this. When you guys are on the road, having fun, I know some shows are coming up in Missouri there in June. Uh, what do you like to eat? What do you like to do for fun? Like days off from music? What, what are there some activities that take place with the band? Um, well, play golf. <laughs> sort of. Uh, sort of. <laughs> I really like, we eat like a bunch of trash pandas, man. You're talking like taquitos and hot dog, like two for one hot dogs at the gas station. Quick trip if you're down in Missouri or Speedway. I love that. or and all. Like that's <laughs> right up my alley, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, you said. I can have two taquitos for a dollar. Let's, let's do that. Yeah, we're that's that's how we. And then my uh, my drummer, we call him Lunch Meat because that's all he wants. A tray of lunch meat, and he's good. <laughs> I love that too. Yeah. All right. With rapid fire, love this. And sometimes it's not so rapid because it does take some thought. First song you ever sang on stage. What was that song? Oh, I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> what was it about? Do you know uh, that? The first one that I can remember is uh, that show that I was telling you about. It was uh, So Cold by Breaking Benjamin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yep. That's another good one. Yep. Another good, uh, fantastic song. All right. Uh, have fun with this one. Uh, last show to binge watch. What'd you get into? 1923 Yellowstone. I need to, I need to watch that series, man. They say it's, mm, it's just really good. And I need to, I, I've is. seen bits and pieces of it, but I've got to get into 1923. I really do, which is, uh, and I know that they're coming up. I want to say, is this the, fi- the final season? Is, for for Yellowstone or Kevin Costner is this? Yeah, is this- well, I they got I, there's. It sounds like there's some like behind the scenes like beef going on with Kevin Costner and Taylor mm-hmm. Sheridan and all that. But yeah. honestly, I think like Yellowstone as a whole, the like the series is kind of like it, it's it's okay. But like I really really like the 1883 and 1923. Yeah. Those are really really good. I love that. So yeah, and of course Lenny Wilson. So I'm speaking to her. She's done very well in in that series too, yeah, with tracks and everything will. else, and just the the acting side of it too. And I love the fact that she's just a great, uh, great person too, as well. All right. I'm going to have fun with this one too. Uh, favorite cartoon growing up. Mm. Probably Ninja Turtles. <laughs> right there with you. Cause I was yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Thundercats and Thundercats oh. was the shit. I love that one because it was just, it was just something about that. It wasn't Mumra. It was just something about, I don't know, man. It was just a great show. Great series and great writing. Speaking of songs, they had great, uh, you know, uh, music in Thundercats. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I love that one. G.I. Joe, big fan of that one too as well. All right, uh, favorite toppings on pizza. What goes on a Derek Randall pie? Just meat. There you go. <laughs> meat, as much meat, like the meat lovers type pizzas. Although the favorite, my, the best pizza I ever had was in Rome. It was a margarita Ooh. pizza that they made fresh there. You can, uh, it's, it's probably just, you know, the nostalgia of being there, but they use like the the fresh buffalo mozzarella and then the tomatoes from Pompeii. And like, it's just as yeah. fun. like, it's so good. I was just like blown away. Like how come our pizzas don't taste like this back home? <laughs> but like, if I'm, if I'm here in, here in the state side, man, it's definitely uh, just meat lovers. What, whatever the meat lovers is, is what I'm, I'm down. That's that's what it, <laughs> most places you always ask for that uh, going into, man. Well, I tell you what, it's a great album out there too. If I had a chance to review it, quote on it, have a good time with it. I uh, listen to it in depth and man, some good ballads. I've talked about some up-tempo kick-ass rock songs that are there for country. Uh, like I said, it's light the night up coming back for you. Fade away. Blackberry crow uh, favorite monster uh, ain't coming home. This is some good shit out there. So make sure you guys go stream this across all the digital platforms, get them up to a million by next month. They had a half a million streams just in this last yeah. month. Uh, debut album, man, kicking ass, taking names. And of course the, uh, 
second annual Rock for Vets, a golf tournament there for the fundraiser, July 22nd in Claire, Michigan. Rock the number four vets dot live for more information there. Derek, I appreciate the time, my friend. Looking forward to catching up. Uh, let's do that Cardinal game, no doubt, as always, and continue success going forward. We appreciate you being with us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me, and I'm going to hold you to it, man. We're going to go to a game. <laughs> I'm Let looking forward to it. I, I, I'm definitely wanting this summer getaway somewhere because uh, I think it's it's pretty cool. In the next uh, you know few months to a year, we got to get out there because that's one of the ballparks that's on the uh, bucket list, no doubt. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have a friend, Chancey Williams. He'll stop by. A great, great cowboy. Got some new music out there, too, as well. Just came out with a album himself out there. Looking forward to talking to Chancey, too about uh, a lot of cool things, including uh, his album, One of These Days, which came out uh, March 24th. Uh, Wednesday, fantastic female artist out there, Nashville recording artist May Estes here on the Backstage Pass. And that's it for the week. We're done. Uh, nice Memorial Day holiday weekend. And off to see more family graduate. Uh, congratulations to the class of 2023 for all the high school and college graduates out there. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow at 4 with Chansey Williams here on the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Uh, Until then, see you soon.